I'm Gary Webster. Um, I'm an ECTI release uh, practitioner, so I'm uh, actively operating in this market currently. I also uh, work very closely with the Equity Release Council in, in terms of sitting on one of their uh, committees, which is their pol policy affairs uh, group. I've been asked, uh, I think, to uh, talk on what is a very topical subject currently, um, which is debunking uh, the, the myths around equity release. Um, now, you could argue that it's very difficult to have a straight talking and honest look at equity release, certainly from a coalface perspective, um, because to demystify what equity release is, sometimes is, is an area which some advice firms will not take on in a public arena. But I'm happy to, to do that, and I'm happy to defend the industry and its record as an industry in terms of the outcomes that we give to consumers. And so therefore, with regard to debunking the myth and the myths on equity release, it's important that we take a subjective and objective view so that you guys can make up your mind whether you want to come into this industry, whether you want to stay in this industry, whether you, whether, whether you want to do it yourself. Okay, so let's look at some of the myths versus the truth. Are lifetime mortgages more expensive than conventional mortgages? Well, they most certainly are. And if anybody thinks that's going to change overnight, it is not. Because the market is dominated, quite rightly, by life assurance companies. It's not conventional lenders. Conventional lenders took flight from the market in 2008. I looked at this market in 2007 without giving the name of the lender, but it's the number one building society in the sector. And we, we, we were just agog as to how we could enter this market because we had no annuity back book. We had no ability to match off long-term assets uh, to liabilities. We had no pension back book, even though at the time people thought we were a life company. Um, and you've got to understand that lenders receive no interest during the lifetime of the client during these plans. Capital plus interest is played on death or going into long-term care. Equally, in some cases, clients are getting a fixed rate for up to 40 years, potentially. So where could you get a fixed rate at the moment? I mean, the best fixed rate you can get in equity release at the moment, on a, as an annual equivalent rate, is 4.99. So that could be hedged for 40 years. Okay. And equally, there's a hedge against house price inflation. So there's no, there's no doubt, guys, and, and, and we should never elude ourselves that equity release is going to come down to the level of some of the rates that we're seeing in a conventional mortgage. It's a totally different model. It's a life assurance model. It's backed by pension annuities. And legal and general will come into this market to uh, sweat their £46 billion fixed-term annuity back book. So there's the clue. So again, uh, another myth that comes up is that interest always rolls, rolls up, um, eroding the children's inheritance, their legacy. Um, well, uh, you've now got more lenders in the market that will allow the interest to be paid on a voluntary basis, up to 10% of the original capital that was borrowed. So what we are seeing now in many cases, clients have the option to not roll up interest, to either keep the original capital balance level throughout the term. In some cases, some clients are able to pay their loans off over about a 16-year period if they wanted to pay capital at the same time. Where this aids uh, many clients is that the beneficiaries, the children, actually want to pay the interest to keep the capital sum level. So, um, and that comes, um, that comes at no extra cost from the lenders that offer the opportunity to repay interest voluntarily. So it's a major feature and a major change in the market. So it's difficult to repay the loan and heavy penalties exist on repayment. Well, guys, we're not going to deny that although these loans are redeemable, because it is a life assurance market, some of the early repayment charges can be up to 25% of the original capital balance plus um, any, uh, any future borrowings. And that is primarily because the benchmarking for early repayment charges, is off of uh, guilt yields. Because the funding is coming from investments and pension annuities. So in some cases, yes, it will be up to 25%. 
However, what has changed within the market today is that we have more lenders that will offer downsizing protection, so those who want to sell without early repayment charge after a period can do so without paying a 25% early repayment charge. And we also have a, a, a couple of lenders that will actually give you a defined early repayment charge option. So typically it will be 5% in the first five, five years and then 3% in the following five years. So we can do defined early repayment charges. But primarily, there's no early repayment charge on death or going into long-term care. Interest rates and set-up costs make it more expensive option over the longer term. Well, we are seeing lender competition now. As I said earlier, we are seeing the first uh, rate at 4.99 in uh, equity release. And as I said, for, for these lenders, they could be fixing that rate out now for 40 years. So, you know, this is quite stunning uh, numbers in terms of being able to hedge that far. But we are seeing much more competition because of the, 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 you know, the fact that we've got legal and general in the market. Uh, and we're seeing much more offers in terms of free valuations, cashbacks. So it is becoming much more easier for clients to enter this market uh, at, at pretty much low cost in relation to a conventional mortgage. So there's not enough diverse... Uh, the equity release market is not diverse enough to meet the spectrum of retirees. Well, as I said earlier, we've got 60% we've got of the market now which is drawdown. So there's no interest bearing on the amount that's held in the cash reserve. Interest is only rolled up on the initial advance. Um, there are interest-only plans. And there's more and more lenders taking heed of clients' health and lifestyle. So we've got more clients now who, with, um, you know, they're changing health and lifestyle conditions, high blood pressure, smoking, diabetes, and so on, can either get cheaper rates in some cases or higher loan-to-values. So it, it is much more versatile. Um, is it a myth to say that equity release uh, doesn't provide a solution to meet the needs, needs of the baby boomer generation? Well, this is quite an interesting one because lenders are calling in their back books, guys. I don't know how aggressive that you're seeing them, but they are calling in their back books. Um, equity release lifetime mortgages, what people forget, gives clients a safe haven. It is more expensive but because of the equity release code of conduct, the safeguards, clients taking equity release will never go into arrears. They will never have to leave their property whilst it's their main residence. So for many clients, it gives them comfort and security of tenure. So whilst it is more expensive, it does come with, with safeguards. And you know, looking at possible restrictions now in terms of equity release, when it starts at age 55, we do have some lenders on affordability will go up to... Uh, 50%. So they're not all very low loans of value type deals. The industry is not strict enough. Well, you know, lifetime mortgages, um, equity releases covered by statutory regulation, and you also have the equity release um, council's own code of conduct, which we all strictly adhere to within the industry. And the last one there is once equity release has been released, clients are unable to move home. Well, again, all of these plans are, are portable. And, and in fact, some lenders now will even allow the plan to be moved to a retirement development, which you would call community living. So they are very, very flexible. If you think about it, would Aviva, Legal and General, LV be in this market if they were trying to make life difficult for people in retirement? No, these are household names who understand that there are changing needs. People who are taking equity release, their circumstances may change over a period of time. And they're got not going to try and make it hard for them to either move um, or, or redeem.